If you're looking to shave time off your triathlon, then transitions are a great way of doing this. Anything you can do to shorten that part of the race is worth a shot. And that's where these things come in. Elastic laces. It's not because triathletes don't know how to tie their own shoelaces, although that may be an issue for some, who knows. <sighs> these are actually for performance. It's an opportunity to save time going from the bike to the run. And personally, I've never done a triathlon without them. Although I do know a lot of athletes that don't use them. So there's clearly some personal preferences at play. There's some pros and cons. So today I'm gonna to be running through some of those. I'm gonna be putting them through a bit of a versus so that I can help you make your own mind up. Okay, so when we're talking about elastic laces, we're often referring to these, just a stretchy piece of elastic that we use to replace the standard laces on our running shoes. But there are obviously a number of alternatives and I've had a little rummage through some of my old kit and pulled out these. So I've got a set of flat lines. Now these are really similar to your swimming goggles straps and they work in a very similar way to the elastic laces. And then we've got something a little bit different. We've got the greepers. Now these are actually very similar to your standard fabric laces, but then they have this very clever locking mechanism. Now, a really interesting option and we'll cover a little bit more on those later, but for now, let's take a closer look at the elastic laces. Right, the idea behind these elastic laces is so that you can slip your feet into your shoes in one swift motion, and obviously saving the time of having to tie your shoelaces as you normally would. And not to forget, of course, having to slip your feet out of your shoes if you're doing something like a duathlon and running first. So what happens is the elastics stretch as you put your feet into your shoes and prevent you from misshaping your shoe. And then actually equally has enough tension to hold your foot well and securely within the shoe. Right, I've spoken enough about these laces now. Let's see what their difference is through a time transition. Right, I'm gonna do a mock T2. So imagine I've got my bike shoes off already. All I need to do is put my run shoes on and away I go. So for this, I'm gonna start the clock here at this point. I'm gonna to run towards my run shoes. I'm gonna whack those on and then I'm gonna stop the clock when I pass this point here. I'm gonna start with the standard laces and I'm actually gonna do three runs on each. So I'm gonna do without socks, I'm gonna do a run with the socks and I'm also gonna do a run where I put my socks on within the transition, but I'll explain why later. For now, let's get ready for run number one. Let's go. Sixteen seconds. Whew. Run two with the socks. Three, two, one, skip. Fourteen seconds. Two seconds quicker. Okay, the third run with the standard laces, and I've put my socks ready in my shoes. So I'm gonna put my socks on and then my shoes, and away I go. Three, two, one. <laughs> Twenty-eight seconds. Quite a bit slower. Okay, so that's the standard laces done, and I went sixteen seconds on the first run without socks, fourteen seconds with the socks. So two seconds quicker, and I think that's because basically your feet are a little bit clammy when they haven't got the socks on them. So that just causes a little bit of friction as you're putting the shoe on. Um, obviously, I would normally recommend putting talcum powder in the shoe if you are going barefoot. And then obviously, I did the final run where I timed putting the socks on as well, merely because. If you are gonna be putting socks on in triathlon, you need to account for that time. And that came out almost double the time, 28 seconds, 14 seconds slower than my quickest run, which isn't a masses of time, although it is double the time. But we'll weigh up the pros and cons to that later on. But for now, let's take these standard laces out and pop the elastics on. Okay, so I've got my elastic laces on. Now it's worth noting that elastic laces often come with these little locking mechanisms. Now, I've personally never bothered them. I've come from an IT racing background where every second counts. So I normally just tie them to a good tension so I can get my foot in easily. And also they're tight enough that it'll hold the foot securely and well, but the locking mechanisms are really good for you tightening them or loosing them on the move. 
So that is personal, it's entirely up to you. But for now, let's just test these elastic laces on the three runs. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. Okay, so that's the runs done with the elastic laces. Times are in. I went seven seconds for the first run with socks. So half the time of my quickest run with the standard laces, so considerably quicker. Then I went a second quicker again. I went six seconds with the socks. And then obviously I timed myself putting the socks on and then shoes, and I went 19 seconds on that run, which is quicker than the previous time with standard laces. But I have to say, I think I could have done that quicker. I did mess it up a little bit. Clearly, elastic laces are much quicker. And yeah, I mean, that's all very well, saving a few seconds through transition. But what's it like when you're out running on the road or through the trails? And unfortunately, that's where things get a little bit fuzzy for elastic laces, because I'd love to be able to show you a time difference between the two, but that'd be near impossible. And there's so many variable factors at play, but there are clearly so many pros and cons to both. <laughs> As I've shown already, quite simply, elastic laces are quicker through transition. Pro. Some argue that elastic laces allow too much movement for the foot within the shoe, and therefore affecting the athlete's communication between their foot and the sole of the shoe, and then their running performance. Con. But standard laces can feel a little constricting at times, particularly as a race goes on and your feet heat and swell. Whereas elastic laces allow a little more flexibility for the shoe to expand and relieve any unnecessary pressure. Pro. With the increased movement whilst using elastic laces, there is the risk of developing blisters. Con. Now it's not uncommon to get cold hands during a triathlon, certainly if you're racing in the UK like us, and given that you're not doing much with your hands on the bike, can be quite a big ask to try and get them to tie some laces up as you go onto the run. But that's where elastic laces come in. Pro. But the give that elastic laces allow could affect an athlete's biomechanics, and if used over time for all their training, it could cause injury. Con. Well, then there is the distance and terrain to consider. So if you are running off-road, you might want your foot to be a little more secure within the shoe, particularly if you're running over uneven surfaces. As for distance, as the distance increases, the transition becomes a far smaller percentage of your overall race time. So that need for a quick transition becomes far less important, but maybe the comfort becomes a little more important. As I've mentioned already, I came from an IT racing background where every second counts, and I stepped up to half Ironman as a pro. So that quick transition was still a big value and importance for me. Whereas for Heather, she came to triathlon at half or middle distance, and then stepped up to full distance. So she really prefers using standard laces. But then if we take a look at the pros, there is a mix within them, though a lot of them are still using elastic laces, but there is this reduction in importance for a quick T2, which is where I think grippers comes in, are a really interesting option. So it's still that standard laces, good support, but with a quick fastening mechanism. So it really does come down to personal preference, what works for you, your different racing styles, distances, the terrains you're racing on, and really what you're happiest using. As always, we love to hear what you're doing currently or what your thoughts are on it. So do drop them in the comments section below. And if you'd like to, click on the globe and subscribe to GTN. And if you'd like to see another versus socks versus no socks, just click up there. And if you'd like to see our top triathlon hacks to go faster, just click here.